Unveiling the Trump Legal Battle In recent developments, former President Donald Trump has once again taken center stage as he faces his first day in court in a civil suit filed against him in New York. The lawsuit alleges fraud, specifically accusing Trump of overvaluing his properties. As this legal spectacle unfolds, it is imperative to delve into the intricacies of the case and explore the motivations that underpin it. The curious origins of the lawsuit initial question that comes to mind is, who is behind this legal crusade against Trump? In an unexpected twist, it appears that no banks, insurance companies, or business entities are the plaintiffs in this case. The financial institutions involved in Trump's transactions conducted thorough due diligence to estimate the value of his properties. Ironically, this means that even if Trump had inflated the worth of his properties, he might not be legally liable because the banks were responsible for their assessments. Adding to the complexity of the situation, Trump's loans have all been meticulously paid off, and his accounts maintain a favorable standing with these banks and insurance companies. So, who is instigating this lawsuit? The culprit, the state of New York. The state of New York itself has taken legal action against Trump. The lawsuit raises eyebrows as it clearly carries political undertones. It alleges that Trump overstated the value of his properties, potentially subjecting him to substantial fines and putting the Trump organization at risk. Even more disconcerting is the involvement of Trump's children in this legal quagmire. The scenario raises uncomfortable parallels with totalitarian regimes, where governments can arbitrarily persecute private citizens and confiscate their assets. While the state of New York claims to be upholding the law, it appears to be acting through a politically biased lens. The Trump case spotlights a disconcerting trend termed weaponized legalism. In this era, the power vested in a single judge, often influenced by personal ideologies, can be manipulated to render far-reaching legal decisions. In this particular instance, the judge's mistake lies in applying a residential property valuation to Mar-a-Lago, a commercial real estate property. This glaring error underscores the critical importance of accurate property assessments in legal proceedings. In a glimmer of hope for Trump, the judge conceded that the statute of limitations applies to transactions completed before 2014, effectively dismissing a substantial portion of the case. New York Attorney General Letitia James exited the courtroom, presumably humiliated, following the setback. Despite these legal victories, Trump's supporters remain apprehensive about the escalating desperation of his political opponents. The former president's popularity is on the ascent, a trend reflected in recent polls. It is paramount to closely monitor how the Supreme Court navigates these legal challenges and whether it allows this era of weaponized legalism to endure. The lawsuit against Donald Trump in New York brings forth additional questions regarding its timing and the underlying motivations. It emerged after a period of relative tranquility, following Trump's departure from the presidency. This raises the query of whether Trump's political adversaries were strategically waiting to see if he would re-enter the political arena. Reports even allude to substantial financial offers made to dissuade him from seeking office again, highlighting the lengths to which some are willing to go to impede his political aspiration. As the Trump legal saga unfolds, it serves as a stark reminder of the polarization and politicization of the legal system. The outcome of these legal battles could have profound ramifications for the future of American politics, making them a pivotal focal point in the years to come. Like, share and subscribe for more content.